1949. The life of a Maryland family named Dean, living in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. Hold on, Maryland, D.C. Wait for it. <laughs> the life of a family named Dean, living in the suburbs of Washington, D.C., was disrupted when their 13-year-old son, Douglas, began playing with a Ouija board gifted to him by a recently deceased aunt. First, it was just the sounds. Water dripping where none could be seen, the scratching of animal claws on wood where none could be detected, then the sound of squeaky shoes trekking back and forth beside the little bed. The sounds became more frightening as time passed, but the clawing seemed to emanate from within Douglas's mattress. <laughs> In view of family members who could not repeat this action, a large chair Douglas sat in to violently over and expelled him. A rocking chair Douglas sat in at a friend's house began not rocking, but spinning around. And his desk at school shot on the aisle and slid to the front of the classroom. His bedroom dresser slid across the room to block the door <laughs> and prevent entrance. His parents, of course, removed him from school. But when he began to wake at night screaming or muttering in strange, obscene, guttural voices, Voices that threatened those around him, they knew they had to seek help. On the day they went to visit their Lutheran minister, scratches appeared on Douglas's body, as though carved by a talent, spelling out the word no. The minister prayed with the family frequently. He and other friends helped them organize a prayer circle. But when nothing seemed to help, the minister suggested the deans talk to a Catholic priest because Catholics don't dismiss the idea of devils. Agreeing to help, the priest had Douglas sent to a nearby Catholic hospital, where he may be surrounded by symbols of faith and religion. But the growing violence of the boy necessitated he be placed in restraints. Silly spat and kicked, and even managed to get a piece of bed spring loose, which he ranked across the priest's arm, opening a wound requiring more than a hundred stitches. Finally, the local priest admitted he was helpless and advised the family to journey with the boy to St. Louis. Oh, why? Yeah, oh, why? <laughs> because St. Louis University was founded and at the time operated by the Jesuits. And tradition says that the Order of Jesus retains some of the ancient texts and rites which can be used for exorcism. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> a group of three priests gathered round Douglas and St. Louis, praying and commanding the demons to depart. But despite their best efforts, things grew worse. Douglas thrashed about for incredible periods of time, bending and twisting in ways not humanly possible, uttering sounds that were more animal than man. He destroyed any religious artifact, books, or beads that got within reach and then attacked the priest at any opportunity, laughing in guttural tones as he did. Even in his quiet moments, he could be heard singing in a whispering voice of singing songs from times long since past. And then, the turning point. During one of Douglas's more violent moments, a voice from the boy indicated that he would not be free until he himself called upon Jesus for help. So they adapted their attack. Instead of pursuing the beast, they nurtured the boy. They used Douglas's few rational moments to form the Catholic sacrament of baptism. And though he thrashed and cursed throughout, in the end he spoke the words, I do renounce Satan in all his works. The next morning, at 10.45 a.m., the priest arrived at Douglas's room to hear him announce in a clear voice, I am St. Michael. I command, I command you, Satan, and the other evil spirits to leave this body in the name of Dominus. Now, now, now. A great explosion tore through the hospital. Heard <laughs> by everyone in the building. And then, Douglas said in his own voice, He's gone. The priests were instructed not to report what happened. But obviously, some of them did, making Douglas's the best documented case for, of exorcism in our time. It was then, after a few details were altered, 
that the basis for the book and the movie, The Exorcist. And it happened right here in Missouri. Wow. <laughs> you know, I just realized I absolutely hate stories about exorcisms. <laughs> <laughs> hate like this one? Or hate like it scared you? Uh, hate like it scared the living sh <laughs> she asked. <laughs>